everybody. Hello. It being 4 01, um, I call to order the Committee on City Services and the Northampton City Council. And to note, I am uh, Maureen Carney, uh, Chair of this Committee. And with us, we have Councillor Marianne LaBarge, Councillor Jim Nash, and Councillor Dennis Bidwell, and our uh, Clerk to the Council. Laura Kretzel. So uh, that being said, I'll ask any public comments, seeing none, their motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. Okay, any additions, corrections? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. And thank you for coming. We have an update today from the Veteran Services Department. Um, we also have, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, and it, uh, I've just been. Just to note that this is being audio and video recorded. Thank you, Councillor. So, um, thank you for coming. Uh, if you'd like to join us here at the table, typically we just have a conversation with folks. Um, <clears throat> oh, boy. Do you want me to stand no, or good. sit? Or what I can't do is I'm most comfortable to with you. Yeah, all right. There's wheels. wheels on this, so we could I race know, around the room. This is really scary. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, I, I can start. My name is Tom Hayes. I'm the commander of VFW Post 8006 and also the vice president of the uh, Northampton, the Veterans Council of Northampton. I handed out uh, a little agenda sheet here. It entails what we're doing at the VFW and what we're doing citywide with the Veterans Council. One of our first events coming up uh, this Saturday is what we call the OTI training. It's Officer Training Institute where state officials from the VFW come in to our post and start explaining the proper procedures for the choir master, you know, the receipts, the billing, uh, membership, dues, the, the correct procedures for all the new guys coming in, the new members, so that they understand how the finances are uh, contributed, how we receive money, and so on and so forth. Uh, that'll be a, 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 full, a full day. We're going to provide some coffee and donuts for them in the morning, and we'll provide them for the meal at noontime. Uh, the BFW is also sponsoring a cruise in Northampton Classic Car and Truck Show the third Wednesday of May, June, July, and August, located at the Blue Bonnet Diner. It's a fundraising event that we help veterans that are in need, spouses of veterans that are in need. Uh, it helps our general fund. We have a raffle, we have some gift cards being given away. This is our third year of doing this. Uh, that is strictly the VFW doing that. And again, thank you to Blue Bonnet for uh, letting us use their facilities. One of the citywide events is the annual Memorial Day Parade this year takes place on Monday, May the 27th. Uh, the 151st. 151st. <laughs> and I want to remind everyone that last year was 150th, and they told me that I participated, and I don't remember because at the end of the parade I had a heart attack. <laughs> yes, you did. I saw but gosh. thanks to the Cooley Dickinson Hospital, absolutely, they saved my life. So. Glad to be here. Yeah, we didn't have enough video for him to remember everything. Yeah, we, we were telling him. We're working on it. <laughs> so that steps off at 10 o'clock from Trinity Row in, North Han uh, in Florence. No, your note says 11. Is well, that's the ceremony at the oh, cemetery. Oh, okay, so it's step okay. off But 10. the parade will step off. Yeah. That's, I'm sorry for that mistake. No, no, no. It's always stepped off at 10 o'clock. Yep. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to do the route through Florence. And get settled inside get the settled. cemetery. Yeah. The cemetery at the Park Street Cemetery. So what time does the parade start? Ten o'clock. I'm sorry, right down ten o'clock. So try, you know, it's best if you get there nine thirty. No way to record ten, so you know where you're to be and Our, kick off. Yep. And I'm hoping that you guys will let us all know that you're going to be there or not. Um, no. Yes, yeah, you've already you've already RSVP. Uh, you know, we set the you tent are up. Yeah. Okay. We set the tent up and what have you. We're sending it to the chairs. It's been fun. 
Yeah, just but let Becky know. Yes, yeah, I know. It's just yeah, we, we realized right. last year it's a lot better if we know. Exactly. Otherwise, we end up going looking, saying, geez, maybe they're gone to the wrong place, something like that. So yeah. if we know you're going to be there, then we can look for it in case we don't see it. A little added feature this year also, we're going to have a, a narrator. I talked to Brian Joyce, who will be narrating the parade from the um, little triangular. It's, uh, it's, it's where the water fountain is across from the VFW. We're going to have speakers set up there. So, because it worked out so well last year, we're going to do that again this year. And Brian Joyce has offered, well, kind of hope to do it. He was well told. That, yeah, he was well told. Yep. <laughs> so that's going to be pretty good. And the VFW, you can, uh, myself and a few of the other members, we've been working on a flyover, and we've got two F-16 fixed-wing jets going to be doing a flyover, providing we have no cloud cover. Last year they were assigned also, but they have to fly. It has to be three thousand feet. And had too much cloud cover, and they couldn't pull it off. So I've been in, I've been talking to the people involved. The jets are actually, actually I'll tell you a quick story. I got a phone call from um, Will Sparrow. He says, "I said, how are you all doing up there?" I said, "Fine." He says, "I'm calling in conjunction with your request for two aircraft." Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm in Montgomery, Alabama. I says, "You're coming up from Montgomery, Alabama." Well, what's happened is Barnes Air Force Base. They're going they're going to be deployed. Most of their equipment is going to be gone, so they're sending two jets up to Quonset Bay in Rhode Island. They'll be stationed there for that weekend. They're also doing Ludlow, I believe, Chicopee, yeah. and us. Okay. So they're going to fly over. So they're sending two jets up for that. So yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah. And they go pretty fast, so they can cover us pretty they quickly. Cover, <laughs> cover the area. But we don't keep. They don't keep anything at Westover. I mean, I know it's uh, mostly the transport. If I wanted stuff, anything yeah. from Westover, it'd be one of the C5As, one of the big ones. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they will <laughs> assign that. You know, if, if, if those people in Montgomery or Weber didn't pick that up, what? there may that, even be. Know, there could have been it's a impressive. couple of helicopters. But it just so happens that it came up on our computer that, you know, they, if you want to do this flight pattern, blah, blah, blah. In fact, I had to give them the flight pattern. And I says, well, you have to head you have to east, it up. east to You're west on, on, uh, east to west on, no, Root it's Root absolutely free. East to west on 9. East to know. west on 9. I said, just rip it up Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all set, providing we get the weather. So uh, that's it. It's, it's pretty neat. Now, also, every year during the parade, one of our service organizations has to provide a collation or a, you know, a bite to eat after the parade for any of the participants. Last year, the VFW did it in conjunction with the Elks at the Elks. This year, the Elks reached out to us and asked if they could use our parking lot. And I said, of course, and I've been working with the Exalted Ruler and we're going to be setting up our tent in the parking lot so any, any and all participants are invited to come over and have a hot dog or a hamburger bag of chips and water so they can just walk you. over rather than yeah, yeah. Right. Right. yeah it's sense. a lot easier you know get more recognition and that's just an example of a couple of clubs a lodge and a, and a vfw working together not opposing each other so right. things it, it, it's really neat that you know they reached out to us we reached out to them and it, it's all good and so the uh, ceremony will take place in the park. We'll, we will post the colors. I've been asked to do be the speaker this year. So I've already got my speech all lined up. <laughs> uh, it's, this year's theme will be just about um, sacrifice and survivors of you know the, the family that have been left behind. Uh, the next event is the annual Flag Day Ceremony. Right, which I'm gonna to talk to them about the Field of Honor. Okay, well, that. No, I just okay. brought my check over today. Uh, all right, uh, the next thing that BFW is doing in July, we have our annual pig roast. That's another fundraising event in the parking lot at the BFW. This will be our sixth year. Uh, last year we had to skip it because I wasn't around. Uh, then we move on. Yeah, I'm not bringing Seamus or Raphael. Yeah. Neither one of them are going. 
The next event. Do they need to buy tickets in advance? Is this usually a Yeah, yeah, we'll do. post it. It'll be on a website. Okay. It'll be advertised in the newspaper also. It'll we'll be see, live entertainment outside. You get tickets. Um, Twenty dollars yep. a person, yep. five kids, uh, yep. and they'll it's just it's part of. He says the tickets will be on their website. Yeah, we'll be on a website, and, and we'll advertise in the paper and do. A and typically, bit. people buy them right then. They can the day of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, have, we to, usually have plenty of food, so yeah. that's that's not. That's, Is this inside? Yes, right. What's that? Inside. Outside, rain or shine, and if it's raining, we'll move it inside. But typically, we set the tent up, and okay. a couple of years ago, we had a. Dunking tank. You never guess who had to sit in that. <laughs> yeah. And we move on to the Veterans Day Parade. There will be a parade this year. It'll step off at 11 o'clock from Lamprin Park and proceed up Main Street, Northampton, to Pulaski Park, where we will have a ceremony there uh, to recognize all our veterans and the activities that day. We are in the process of developing a brunch or a breakfast. We're not totally sold on a breakfast yet, but uh, Steve and I and a couple of the other members are talking about a brunch. Possibly having a brunch at the Senior Center right. or the World War II Club so that you know we get maybe more participation from people right here where the ceremony takes place at Pulaski Park than we can move on down to the Senior Center or uh, yeah, the World War II Club, because both places hold about 150 or 200 people. Yeah, the Senior Center is a bigger space. Yeah, um, it's bigger. So we'll see. Basically what we've done for kind of the last dozen years is we've always had like a breakfast, the yes. Veterans Day breakfast, or a Veterans Breakfast, mm -hmm. and it hasn't been on that day. And then we've had the parade and the ceremony with the speaker and the whole thing with not having it last year. We still had the ceremony and the speaker. We just didn't do the parade, but it because it's chilly. I mean, those that remember being in front of Memorial Hall yeah. in the shade, it's nice and cold. So the idea was is we will have the parade, we'll have the ceremony, but the speaker won't be there. The speaker will be at the breakfast or the brunch, whichever end we do it on. And that's where they're going to talk, so not everybody's freezing and going like this instead of so it's listening to what they're saying. Ceremony yeah, it'll be a briefer ceremony after the parade, and then we carry it over to either before or after. I like the idea of after, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I do too. And we've requested a flyover for that day, but it's so far out right now that they received our request, but they just have not done a confirmation with it. But uh, we've requested a flyover for Veterans Day also. Mm -hmm. The last thing we do at the VFW is we have bingo every Friday night, so all, all I can say is, you know, the community, anybody's welcome to come in, and that is uh, the, uh, actually the bingo was moved from the uh, Holly Street, what is it, St. John's? St. John's Campus. Yeah, they closed it up and moved it up to our place. So. How's it doing? Oh, I guess you're doing, Angie's running it, and uh, they're renting the hall, which helps us, and so but it's still open to the community. Yeah. So any and all are welcome. You should talk about the... Uh, what time is the bingo? It starts at 6.15. But they start coming in about 1 o'clock. Friday nights, right? Friday nights. Every Friday night at 6.15. People come in at 1? Oh, sure. oh, yes. Well, my grandmother, my grandmother <laughs> yeah, used to go in first house. thing in the morning as soon as they oh, opened it. She'd get oh, her yeah. chair and all her cards right. lined up. Oh, yeah. Nobody could okay. take her get, favorite chair. You gotta get all your stickers, you know, toys out. Open well, that, well, you have yeah. those stickers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Line up yeah. They come in with a bag full of them. Markers. Yep, little markers, oh, little tabs. Yep. Next thing you know, we'll have a casino. Before you start on that, what we are. I have to bring it back up to our membership. I have a post meeting this Wednesday night, and we're going to again work to. I didn't put this on the agenda because we haven't voted on it, but I am going to do another policeman's award evening and a fireman's award evening again. But I can't put anything in writing yet because I haven't talked with the chiefs. And, you know, this past year we had in October and what was it, March? Yeah. And uh, that was we will good, be doing. Right? We'll, most likely be doing that again because you know there's going to be some officer or firefighter that's going to be deserving of something. So we will be doing that, and I will let you know when the dates are. But we 
I have to put over from the members first. Okay. All right. Just to tie in when we were talking about all the ceremonies, the other thing that's happening for the first time this year is um, we are doing us and the elks and participation from the other groups, so we didn't get anything official. Uh, Field of Honor, they've had it in a few communities, one in West Springfield and Mansfield, Mass, but it, it's an opportunity to have a whole lot of flags put up. Um, and you can sponsor flags uh, in your name and somebody else's name. You can ask for a whole lot of them in your name. It is being done as a community event, a community experience. What we're really hoping is, is that it'll be very attractive to the eye, but we're also looking that it's gonna start on Armed Forces Day weekend, and it's gonna go right past the 4th of July. So um, we're planning some things for the community around Memorial Day. Um, also something on Flag Day for the Flag Day ceremony that the Veterans Council puts on with the Elks. And we're also thinking that maybe something around the 4th of July as well, because it's going to be an opportunity for people to sponsor and put up flags. And this year, there's going to be, it's not going to be perfect because we're doing it on the fly first time ever, but um, it looks like it's going to be good. We're looking at 150 flags we're hoping to be able to get sponsored and put out. And anybody in the community can walk through the flag area and heard people can have their names put on it. Can you um, show where that flag area is again? It's going to be at the Elks. At the Elks. Oh, at the Elks. Okay. Right. So oh, they have all those grounds there on the left. Yeah. And we're going to be putting up a whole two rows of flags all the way down. And depending on how it's big five it gets. Right. Um, so that is in conjunction with the city because we want it to be a community event um, and we're hoping to grow it next year. The Veterans Council will have time to comprehend all of it and also get more on board, but we really wanted to get it done this year to get a start. So we're going for it. So in terms of that, for folks, I mean, if they want um, to, you want outreach to the community for folks to sponsor a flag or right right so they're yeah so the way the the sponsorship works is you can get if you're um if you want to sponsor there's everything from twenty five hundred dollars for a corporate or a big organization to sponsor and they get like 15 flags and they get noticed on all the different things that are going out that they've sponsored it everything down to individuals can purchase $50. you know um for fifty dollars they can get a flag and recognition. So if, um, like, my father and four uncles were all veterans, I could sit there and say, you know, I want to put a flag and I want their names to be put at the somewhere on the flagpole to recognize that they were veterans that they served. And it's for veterans, and they're talking about first responders. But again, this is our first attempt. So we're getting it out. Um, and we want to tie in other events around it like the ones I mentioned, and we're going to reach out to the American Legion and the VFW to see if they want to have anything on a special day during that time period. But it's going to be up for about two months. And then at the end of it, the flags will be taken down, and the people who sponsor it are going to receive the flag, or they're going to um, ship them to deployment units around the world um, for people that are in units here in Western Mass and in Massachusetts. So, um, what does the list say on it? Goes from fifty dollars all the way up to twenty five hundred. It goes into categories. So there's um, there's blue, which is honorary, uh, which is one flag. Um, then there's you got blue, then you got white, which is three honor flags, one hundred twenty five. Red for two hundred is four flags. Star is three hundred. You get six flags. Honorary, which they kind of said small business or large group, seven. Honor flags at 500. Stars and Stripes is $1,000. You get 10 flags. Founder is 12 honor flags. And um, Old Glory, which is the corporate organizational kind, um, 2,500 it would cost. And with that comes other things as well as um, just the flags. Yeah, because that is not what we got at our meeting. 
We did not get that. Uh, you probably got this. Right, this, we got the 200 and it's one flag. Okay, oh. so um, it yeah, shouldn't be. Today. Okay, so we'll clear it up. Uh, again, like I say, there's going to be snafus like crazy because okay. we're all just kind of right. getting it together. Um, but people, uh, at some point, uh, very soon, people will be able to access that list of... Yes, we're going to have, it'll be on the Elks website, it'll be on the city's website as well for our department. Right. You could go in and learn all about it and sponsor it, and it goes, and you just um, go from there. We're looking for volunteers okay. to help with it. And we got time for a city council three-minute thing. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Before yes. Before Memorial because Day? I think you yes, should get a hold of Don. Because yeah. at the Elks, yeah, I'm actually we, got, we had it at our meeting, and we went today, Rich and I, and got the $200 one, which is one flag. Okay. Well, this was all, this was changing as hour by hour. So we've been back and forth all day today. Yeah, so by the time, so, as Tom okay. just suggested, it Yeah, you'll, you'll be clear the, once it, it's yeah. decided, but... Um, yeah. Do we have time? Because you're a council meeting? Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Do you want me to come down? The May 16th. Come down and talk? Maybe both. The May 16th. Yes, uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. May 16th. May 16th is our yeah. next council meeting, and it will be, yeah, that would be a good time to. Right, because I. Should we get on the agenda or just do a three minute yeah. I would say a three minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can have one slide on the um, speaker. There's a. Sign up. The three minute meeting. I, I would think that unless you talk to the mayor, unless you talk to Councillor O'Donnell, or unless we would put, I mean, I think that might be enough to be able to make the announcement. I do three minutes. So he does three minutes, and I do three minutes. Yeah. Oh minutes. yeah, that's right. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, 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 we'll reach out to him. Right. Because yeah. You, yeah, we'll, you, we'll you, you, yeah. We're getting into some very busy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been talking with Don all day. Already, I know some people are coming tonight to drop off checks. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm meeting him right after I'm I leave here. Came. Yeah. Well, that that's the latest that I've got. Um, unless something happened from the last time I got something, the first time you got it. But hopefully, it'll all be figured out by the end of. Yeah, this is um, kind of a short today. notice. But yeah. But we're we're hoping it you know kicks sure. off and um, does well because we want to do it every year and, and it'll be gr pretty impressive just looking out at the grounds. I would have liked to have seen it too on Trinity Road out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. Now, do you, do, you do, you expect that, do you expect this to start before Memorial Day? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so okay. what we're, it's going to be two months. It's going to be up for. So we want to tie so it different things. So won't last through Veterans Day. No. Oh, okay. no, no, no. Um, okay. And it's actually long compared to some other places. They do it for like just a month. We're doing it for almost two months. Right. But we're thinking, you know, if we can start on Armed, Armed Forces Day, that also includes Memorial Day. And Fourth of July. And, yeah. and Flag, Flag Day. Day. Flag. 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 Right. And we're hoping that, you know, on Flag Day, I mean, there's going to be a lot of flags and maybe we can get more interest in the public coming to learn about what Flag Day is all about. And, yeah, so we'll uh, have a couple of opportunities. You'll have the yeah. May. Uh, city council meeting and then yes. there'll also be one in june usually yeah. it's the fourth flag day it's usually the second week in june so oh, no, can, i'm sorry the, no it's july that it's it, so june you'll still get the first first week in june, okay well right? we and we'll be more than happy to come back and talk about all the stuff that we're doing with right. the veterans council dfw yeah. and helps and our department because don had talked with it at our last meeting of the elks mm -hmm. in regards to that they're also after we retire the flags, then there's going to be a barbecue. Right. Yeah. Chicken barbecue on the last day after we turn over the flags. Yeah. yeah. So those are, that's after just new neat July. things that we're doing here in the city. And we, we got a lot of, um, we got more people who wanted to volunteer and who got involved since last year's 150th. That was really, that, um, even though he doesn't remember brain. it, it went really well. Right? <laughs> Not a parade, huh? Yeah, we had a parade. Yeah. So. <laughs> So that's that's all that's happening ceremonially and, and community events in the city. I also just well, passed up my budget. Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Well, also in conjunction with the parade and the Elks, the Elks are going to be building a float that uh, oh, right. uh, is a mini field of honor flag. They're going to be putting that float out there. Oh, okay. And what we're doing, and it's not exactly protocol on the military no, side as far as the VFW goes with the color guard. No, but we are anticipating five or six American flags this year to lead the parade. 
Usually it's only one American flag and a BFW flag. Oh, yeah. I've discussed it with the members. We're going to have five or six flags across the street leading a parade, and then in conjunction with that float that's going to depict the field of flag field of honor. So we're pushing. You know, okay. we're trying to get the word out there. So that's what's happened ceremoniously. Um, I just passed out your, my budget and where we stand at this point so folks can just take a look at it. Um, we are close on a few numbers, but we're, we're doing all right. We should be all right with the benefits amount. Um, with only uh, two months left, we should be fine. Our numbers are down. Um, since peak time of maybe those that were involved six years ago, we had high numbers of people and stuff like that. It's changed. Um, the numbers have gotten less, but I'm not exactly sure why, and there's been discussion around the state why that might be, but I think you're now going to see it just rise a little bit more now that the Vietnam vets are getting older and retiring and their dependents. So, uh, we're going to try to do more push of outreach. Um, one of our big outreach events for us locally is to make sure that we're at, uh, and we, we worked in the, out again with both the VA and with um, Three County Fair, that one of the days is going to be Veterans Appreciation Day, and veterans get to come into the fairground for free. We do that the first day of the Big E, it happens down there, and we saw that. And so we've now had it a couple of years at the three county fair, and veterans can get a free t shirt, they get a little card, they can come over, and we're just making sure that while they walk over, we can tell them about their benefits. Any spouse, surviving spouse, knows that you know there's stuff for them that we're there if they need us. So that's going to be a big outreach event, and actually, this year. It's helpful because Cummington is in my district. We have a Veterans Appreciation Day at the Cummington Fair, which is Sunday. And again, the veterans get to come in. So um, our numbers are a little bit low. I think they're going to rise again. The only other really thing of note in the budget is if you see there was some money encumbered from the year before, that encumbrance was um, for the change out front. Now, if you notice, the flagpole got moved, and the USS Northampton Bell is now center in that spot. Uh, in case you were wondering why we did it, we were told about six months before that the bell, which was in Memorial Hall, was sinking through the floor very slowly. Mm -hmm. And since they were redoing the floor joists and the floor itself, they said, hmm, we can't have the bell here anymore. And we went, hmm, okay, we'll put it on concrete in front of it. So that's why it's now there. It's much more visible. Uh, well, it's much more visible. Um, and so it, it, it gets the exposure. Um, we've got to take a little bit more care of it because it's open to the elements more. But uh, it, it was moved, and that's, that's where that money, why we encumbered it, and what it was spent on was to get that stuff taken care of. I was told the leaks went thirty one hundred pounds. Eugene Casey's brother and him do the concrete work or whatever. Eugene Casey. Yeah, Eugene was one of the ones who. Yeah, his his group were the ones who moved in. They did it as a donation, didn't they? Partially, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say so. three thousand pounds? I, I was told it was thirty one hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. With the with the rack, the stand, and everything. Yeah, and then all you could sense. really see the floor. The brass. Yeah. The brass is yeah. about. Four to five inches thick. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was on a, a battleship. Yeah. So, on a floating battleship. So, we could handle that weight, but our floor couldn't in Memorial Hall. It's an old building. So, yeah, we the winched floor it is now flat. We winched it out of the flatbed. Yeah. Yeah. It's now, this budget, Steve, this isn't the budget. This isn't a copy of your department budget, is it? it it's, it's just it's, a, a it's quick overview of, of what we spent. This oh, year, okay. where we are up to date. Oh, okay. So, so it's, this it's is what we're putting. Answers. It's not the budget that we're going to look at. No, no, no. Okay. This this is not the for the looking yeah, forward budget. Okay. This is just so kind of an update of where we are in this year's budget. And Arsenal. so, with this balance, I mean, is it typical that? Um, oh, I see. This is 
For this available balance, that's the, not for the rest of the fiscal year. Yeah, that's for what we've got for the rest of the, rest of the fiscal year. Which is really just May, June, and May, June. June. Yeah. So. Okay, so and then typically does, oh, um, does that, if there is an excess there, it just goes back as goes tailings. Goes back to the general fund. As tailings, yeah. Yeah, okay. and so some of those things will, other things will, you know, a lot of the ceremonial stuff that will all be spent uh, it's just the veterans benefits that's part of the state reimbursement. Yes, we will right. have left over in that, not go back into the general fund. Right, because right, I see just those lines because the majority of that really reflects the veterans benefits, which right. is the federal and state amount. Mm -hmm. Right, it's the state reimbursed of amount Trump, of yeah, both of that and medical insurance and medical co-pays right those expenses those yeah, are yeah and, and that's because yeah. our numbers are down as far yeah, as yeah we don't have them. otherwise from our city budget we have nothing of substance here we're talking hundreds of dollars here or there right right there's not any great savings because right. we still have all the other operations that are going yeah. on but so so those those whatever is left over from those state reimbursed figures does that go back to the state yeah. Yeah. no so no so what happens is is so the the amount that you see under veterans benefits, yeah, the great I have benefits. sent out. That's what we have given to the people who are eligible in yes. advance. The four hundred thirty eight is the amount right. spent. The two hundred sixty. Well, Seventy five percent of that yeah. comes back from the state. I see. There so is still. some of it that we get a hundred percent back. Oh, okay. Okay. But we don't get that until next year. Right. So. Whatever they determine we're going to get back at the end of June saying, oh, from April to June, we authorize you to pay out this benefit. Okay. Next June, 75% and okay. in some cases, 100% comes back. So you're the allowed to budget things based on what you have left over in this, right. um, in this available balance. Oh, right. Okay. So, and so it's just, when I started back 15 years ago, can you believe I've been doing this for 15 years? <laughs> Um, you know, we only paid out 34,000 in benefits. Now we're up at 600,000. Um, we might not get to 600,000 this year, but again, it's because our numbers are down, but they always can go back up. And I've been always very grateful to the city council. They've never denied us, um, never. enough money to get this done and take care of the folks that we have. And we have some unique cases of that. The guy who just retired from the Department of Veteran Services for the state talked about how he could always get, you know, you don't have to appeal this. I, we can always work out anybody. If you're really trying to help somebody, uh, by the time you get to me, we can work it out. Oh, except the one person who's gone over my head so many times I'm bald up top, that would be me. <laughs> who went over his head, you know, because we have very unique cases in the thing. Because we have a whole shelter because we're a small community, but yet the amount of people we have the largest per capita, we're more like Boston than anything else because of the, the shelter. VA. We have the VA, we have people in the community, the VASH program is very big in this area. So we, we have some challenges and it's not always easy, so I have to keep appealing up to get our reimbursements back, but for the most part, we're getting all of it back. Steve, question on the burial. Does that ever go up to price? So, yes. Um, and I think you'll see that the next um, fiscal year budget that we're going to have more money allotted. It has always been if an indigent veteran passes, if, if the family or whoever remains, if there's not an ability to pay for that funeral or they do up to three thousand dollars we will cover two thousand but it can't be more than three thousand of the cost so in other words if a veteran dies there's like a sister that lives in delaware for instance this has just happened that's why i'm using it so the sister lived in delaware the veteran was a hud bash he was indigent he basically was living off of small social security money. He's died. We got in touch with a local funeral home. They provided everything. He was uh, interred at a veteran cemetery. The whole thing cost about $2,500. I provided 2,000 of it because it was under 3,000. That changed as a veteran's day this year. Now, 
it's a five thousand dollar variable, and we will reimburse up to four thousand, which is a whole lot more. Because really, I was very fortunate with some of the funeral homes here in town who did it at a loss, but they were going to do it for the veterans, so they were doing it at a loss because you can't really do all the things. I know. For two thousand dollars, but that was the most I was allowed to give them, so they did it. Veteran Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. Yes. Now, say I'm a veteran and I have a spouse and I pass away. No matter who you are, you can go there. Yes. Right? Does it cost to go there? It costs nothing for you to be interred if you are a Massachusetts veteran. You get to go there. Now, the spouse of the veteran, the there is a small fee and that's for the markings and stuff like that, but for the veteran, it's great. Both of my parents are by it. Now, what about like you being a son? Nope. But of course, I'm a Massachusetts veteran, so I can't. <laughs> I know. Lie. You're lying. <laughs> but you're going to get yourself. But, because um, I've heard it differently. Well, no. So if you are, say, my parents. My father's a veteran. My mother and father got to go there. If I was a child under the age of 18, yeah. or if I had been disabled since before age of maturity, which means 18, right. and I've always been disabled, I can be interred there. Okay. But once I got to 18 and pretended that I was on my own, I still needed mom and dad, which is why I allow my kids to, <laughs> it's all growing pains. Um, but yeah, so if, if it's a child who is disabled from their childhood, of a veteran, they also can be interned there. Okay. They're also eligible for my benefits. I try to get it out to folks, you know. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, children who, with a disability that they got at birth or, you know, born with, and they get on SSI at some point when they turn, they're eligible for my benefits if their father or mother was a veteran. What Even if, if they're they were gone. like a mass health. Even if they're a mass health. Well, yeah, the point is saying is that because, yeah. they, because they're a disabled child of a veteran, right. they're entitled to benefits. Right. And it's right. only disabled children. It's right. not it's only disabled. Not right. Right. So, not Jim, please. Yeah, and what are those additional benefits? I, I work with a lot of young people. <laughs> Mary Ann's think of the same thing. <laughs> that, um, what are those additional benefits that? All right, so for instance, if I have someone, um, and we've had it, they've lived down at um, Salvo House or on Fruit Street, Cato. Uh, I had um, the son of a veteran, and he had passed. The son was on disability and always had been on disability. So he lived down there, and he was living off of SSI, which at that time was 720 or something. Now it's 789 or whatever. Well, living on 789, yeah, you're living subsidized housing at 30% of your income, but what's left is not a whole lot to bring up. I can provide extra money for them. And in, some, in a case like that, it could be up to $700 a month. Yes. Additional, I will give them to live off. The rent will go up a little bit, but I pay that extra money and they get more money and they get medical care, any co-pays, anything like that, and I cover. That's not a veteran. That's the, the disabled, the disabled yeah. child of a veteran. Okay, but questionable, because you keep saying a disabled child. Of a veteran. Somebody also can become disabled even after 18 years old. They don't but, but we don't, we're not allowed to cover them under that. I gotcha. Uh, under okay. the law states that they have to have been the child of a veteran while they were dependent, either became disabled or were always disabled by the age of majority. Once they turn 18, if they get disabled after, it okay. doesn't work. Gotcha. But if it's before that, they're considered a dependent of the veteran and they will always be a dependent of that veteran, which means they're always and, and that benefit extends for them beyond the age of 18. Right, right. right. And, okay. and they, they will get it to the day they die. they die. And they can be interred with their parents. Yes, okay. with the parents. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you, you mean to make that cheek. You, 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 so you, you mentioned that when you set up a booth at, at the Three County Fair or Big E, uh, there's items who realize they have not been collecting benefits there. So how, how, how common is that? The, the okay, so I was down at um, 
I, I marched in the Pride Parade and then I hung out by the VA booth uh, while I was there. And a woman came over and she saw the VA stuff and she's talking and I said, oh, are you enrolled in VA healthcare? Which is why they're there to tell them mm -hmm. about. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm 100% service connected. And I said, oh good. And you're getting your state annuity every twice a year? State That's annuity? Right. So the state gives veterans that are 100% service connected $1,000 in February and $1,000 in August. Tax free, it's just theirs. And, but they have to file for it. Well, there's people that don't know that. Right. They, they're not told <clears throat> that as they exit out of the services? Or? Oh, no. God, no, no. Trust me. No, really? No. Really? Yeah. Really? So there's still I people, and there's people who, we just had a young veteran um, last month, we were at another event. I think tomorrow I'm in Springfield at the Bay State. We're doing another outreach event. But a young guy who came, and um, he didn't know there was a bonus. So if you are a Massachusetts veteran and you lived in Massachusetts before you went in, and when you came back, you lived back in Massachusetts, if you were over during these conflicts, there's a thousand dollars right there. Yep. And if you went back again, there's another 500. And if you went back after that, there's another 500. And we just had a, somebody who, uh, I won't mention names because I can't, but they served on this body many, many years ago and they discovered that there was a bonus. They now live on the other side of the state. We did the thing. They now get a thousand dollars. There's so, people so still that's a that. Two, okay, uh, what, what uh, did this one start? at a time? Well, one second, we'll let them first. I'm just curious. Well, how is it that in the exit process, there's not a better job done of informing? So if you look like, like he and I who served and you're getting done, they will put you in a room and they'll tell you all these things you get and you'll walk out of there with a stack of papers and the only thing you were thinking about is i can't wait to get home and see my girlfriend my family my kid you are paying absolutely no attention to what they're all droning on and it's a death by powerpoint and you're eligible for that and then a chat program and then and I, I didn't have any of that come back in vietnam and i yeah. didn't they had your clear to post they give you a, a sheet of paper you go to different areas on the post to clear your, your medical or your dental or your uniforms and all of that. And just, I just want to get on a plane and get home. Right, right. And yeah. then I kind of came back and I didn't care about <coughs> any military or anything. Right. I wanted a job and a family and that was it. Right. So you never yeah. could apply for it? I could have applied for it right then and there. I should have. But you can't now. Oh, I'm, oh yeah. I'm getting my, I'm, I'm almost, almost 100% now. People just not knowing this. Like, people didn't know it. I didn't, right. I didn't realize until a few years ago all the benefits that are up on the hill. It's because unbelievable. Like with Rich, he went in at the beginning of the Vietnam War. Yeah. He doesn't know anything about this. Oh, he well, if he, if he went in, there was a Vietnam bonus. Yep. Look, I just got a guy last year, there was a $300 bonus in 1945 for World War II veterans. That three hundred dollars still is given away to World War II veterans who never asked, never got it, never knew about it, didn't know about it, never filed for it. So we're filing for World War II vets, and they're getting three hundred dollars. Not with it, interest. No, no interest. <laughs> no interest. But that's a good thought. Um, but but so the same thing. A Vietnam veteran, it was five hundred dollars. So if a Vietnam veteran never filed for it and just went, you mean I could have gotten that? It's just years. about your residency. You file it. It doesn't matter how old you are. You will get that bonus. With interest. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. It that's how. The, that's why this outreach program is so important to all the veterans from all of whatever, wherever you're deployed, wherever you went. There's so many benefits out there people don't even know. About. I know, right. right? But you can't get them unless you know about them, right? So that's why we do. So the where do you get program. those forms? Which forms? For the bonus? You yeah. call my office. Yeah. I think it's, time. you know, I, I think know generally, I mean, since you folks are probably going to each make an announcement mm -hmm. at, in one of the upcoming council meetings, just a passing reference to some of the things. Yeah, that, yeah, know, I can do that. I can spill yeah. it off real fast yeah, and just say what's, yeah. what you're eligible for. Yeah, because there's the bonus, there's the annuity, yeah, there's the tax abatements, there's, right. you name it. Now, there's a lot of stuff. And you know, it always cracks me up because they're the one of the legislators and the governor and the lieutenant. They talk about how we have the best benefits in Massachusetts compared to anywhere else, and they are correct. 
as long as people know they can get them. But if, if it's hush hush and nobody right. knows about it, what good is it to yeah. say we have it unless you get it? Now you actually so you have a, a, a database. People don't have to. Um, make themselves known to you before you actually know what veterans live in the city, right? I mean, do you have any other you way of getting database. the information? No, what, all it is, the only, the only thing I, I will know is if a veteran has self-declared on, on the census. Oh, exactly. Other than that, we don't know. The state has done something where they worked out a situation with the Department of Defense that anybody who's coming back to Massachusetts, we will get a notice if they're coming into one of my towns. Like, I'll get a notice if somebody returned to Burby or Northampton or whatever and said, just name the address of record that they had and they've returned home. They might be there, they might not be there. I'll send off a letter um, to them saying, look, we're here. We need Sometimes it comes back, you know, that's not their address. They didn't go back to that home record. Yeah. They probably went to, you know, Oregon. But we get some notification, but not always. And uh, so it is hard to know yeah. who's the veterans in the community. Yeah. That's why we do these outreach events because yeah. we don't always know. You have to self-declare. Yeah. Well, an example, you know, it's tough for us to get members, you know, to our the fraternal organizations. You know, all of our clubs are having a tough time. And a perfect opportunity for me as a commander would be to go to the VA and, and solicit up there. Can't do it. Why is that? Because oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a federal, federal property, property. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and not solicit for membership or membership drive or anything. And it's foolish because we can help them get benefits, or we can direct them right to Steve, right. but they won't let us. Now, what about Steve? You're as a municipal entity. You can. Mm -hmm. You can. I can't go up there and. So, you well, can't solicit. I, I can't solicit because I'm not getting them to be members. I can go up there and say, hey, I got benefits for you. Come and oh, see sure. me, and then when they're yeah. in your office, you or can they, say, I go up there and take applications. Yeah, I but see. Okay. He's, got, he's got a list of names and addresses and what have you. I can't get that. Right. Oh, from him. you can I cannot, get share of that. And there, isn't, and there isn't a way that mm. folks could. You can't have a separate We have to have our own outreach programs. Oh, interesting. But. But can you hand out your, this material in your office? Oh, I can have some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 But he can. I, can, I, I can love to give me the names and addresses and all no. that. Boy, I can get my membership right up. All the American Legion it would help them. It would help yeah. the Elks because the Elks is a veteran-friendly organization. Can't do it. Right. We're on our own. And we need to get the younger ones involved. Yeah. And yeah. so, how can you break that wall? Right. Well, and, and again, the the. And I just gave a speech actually yesterday at the District 7 meeting. Um, the, the thing that's changing in the veteran world is, you know, those of us who had parents who served during World War II, half of all those people who were eligible to serve, served in that war. Korea is still up there. Vietnam, we're talking 30, 40% of all those that could serve, serve. These wars since 2001, less than 1% of the population it's all volunteer it's all volunteer a lot of it's automated and the other part is they go back over and over yeah. and over yeah. again yeah. and how many people went from the guard and reserve who just served four five six times their service well that means that you didn't have to have all these other Same people going for one year tours right. and da 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 good in some ways because not everybody had to do it, but really tough on the individuals and the families. Mm -hmm. The divorce rate of, of veterans after these wars mm -hmm. is just insane. Oh, the suicide rate. And the suicide rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one of the leading causes. I mean, we're asking a guy or a girl to go back three, four times, and they know the situation that they're going back into, and it just, yeah, it's really hard. I lost it. Oh, yes. So, um, yeah, just on the, on the whole thing with the suicide, just so you know, in our community, we are still working a lot with building bridges that brings the veterans lunch. So any veteran out there who wants to go to lunch on a Wednesday from 12 to 1.30 down at the World War II Veterans Association, at the World War II Club, it's a free lunch every single Wednesday. It's done in conjunction with the Diocese of the Episcopal Church of Western Mass. 
And so every Wednesday in Northampton, every Thursday in Greenfield or Hoyoke, every Friday in Chicopee, and now every Tuesday in Lemonster. And we're gonna start one in Pittsfield as How's well. How's the turnout? Great. I mean, I, I crack up because we've now had it down here. We were the first ones. We had it for over four years now. But the first four weeks were my best. Veteran, one veteran showed up and I had all this food and so I fed the volunteers and I fed some of the people in the club later on. Second week, that same veteran showed up. I sat in my office and forgot all about it, so I had to get to go food and run down and give it to him and to some other people. The third week, that same veteran showed up. And the fourth week, three other veterans on top of him showed up, so there was four veterans. And now we run anywhere from 50 to 70 every wow. week. Greenfield, they do about 90. Chicopee, it's about 40 to 60. Um, it's once a month in South Deerfield, once a month in West Springfield. And and that comes out of your budget in terms nope, of the, nope. so the Episcopal what, Church oh, pays for I that. See, and the clubs yeah. donate oh, okay. their space and yeah, their time, yeah, and okay. it's all run by volunteers. I have volunteers that do the dinner down there mm -hmm. every week. And it's mostly just get veterans out of isolation. Mm -hmm. Get them somewhere to where they can be with their buddies and shoot the, you know, a yeah. Um, some of them talk about old stories when they were in, some of them just talk about their back pain. But we have four World War II vets who come every week. One of them drives himself every week, too. He's 94 years old. Wow. Yep. So, and, and that's, why the arts, that's why the diocese is doing it, is to stop the isolation, give veterans a place to go, and feel like they're together. Because um, once you're in, you're always a right. Yeah. No matter how you felt when you left, it's still an experience that not many people know. And now we got less than one percent of serve. Yeah. They're feeling the isolation, so we're yeah. we're, we're working on that, we're battling that. Great. So we got a busy department. <coughs> I had, I had normal hair when I started this job. Oh, oh gosh. Did you? I'm a liar. Yeah, I am like. Yeah, we got a busy month ahead of us. A couple months, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you guys are doing an incredible job. It's yeah. so impressive. Just what, I mean, every time I hear about it, the immense support that we provide for veterans in this yeah. in the city, and I think a lot yeah. of people The community's realize. been good to us. I mean, yeah. you know, whenever we've asked, and we did that veterans tour years ago, Oh, yeah. In a six month time, we raised $26,450 in six months. And that was from donations, things like the Alps, of course, but you know, the local businesses that we approached, boy, they uh, they came out and they helped get, I don't know how many in all, 52 of us went down. All expenses paid. I'd love to do it again, but you know, we can never duplicate that. No. That never, right. ever. And I think since then we've lost 12. Really? That was a lot of work. Yeah, it was good. They still have honor flight that goes. So any any World War II or Korean War and now Vietnam veteran, um, they can also go down to DC. It's just it's a super long day. They have to be at Boston at Logan Airport by I think five thirty six in the morning. Mm -hmm. They fly back from D.C. They spend the whole day down in Washington, D.C. and they come back at like midnight, yeah. 11 o'clock. So yeah. these gentlemen and women have had a huge, you know, 80, 90 years old, it's yeah. tough on them. Yeah, it that's, really is. Yeah. But Too bad they can't they, stay down there they, overnight or something. Yeah, well that's why yeah. The, yeah. what they did well, we was so special. Night. They, they, they did four yeah. nights. Yeah. 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 I'm sure you great sure right right for a small team. Yeah, but it, 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 it is quite the event because last year they had it and they left from the world war ii club and i was there at four o'clock in the morning with coffee and we got them vans to get them to the airport because we had the wives calling us up going my husband really wants to go but i can't drive him to Boston. you know i'm 83 years old how am i gonna get my husband there and so i worked with john perry and we ended up raising a bunch of money again in the community and just said who's gonna said. do it North and North. they got us vans and John and another guy drove them all the way to Boston. They got on the plane. They went down, and then John hung out. Two guys yeah. drove them all the way back. They came back at about midnight. We had them go out to the bar, and everybody cheered them. And all these World War II and Korean War vets were like, people were celebrating, singing to them, and they were, yeah. And which, 
that, that's just a great thing that, yeah. that, that they get to do that. But the one that Northampton did that one year. Yep. And I could have gone, but I, had, I was going to Greece. We didn't need you. You didn't need me. Well, I want to thank you very, very much um, for giving us a whole layout, which I feel is very, very valuable um, for the community and so forth. And thank you. Yeah. Oh, and we will be here. For, I'll talk to Don. Oh, yeah. I'll get we'll get, we'll get for the memorial day. Yeah, and you can even talk to Laura about I mean, should, I, should we get on the agenda or just do a three minute thing? What when we do the three minute thing, thing you can talk right. to Laura beforehand right. and she'll make sure your names yeah, are on. You can definitely sign up for public comment. Yeah. I'd have yeah, to use Facebook to get somebody else. Council All presidents. Right. Uh, right. Three minutes each. We get the formal agenda. Yeah. Yeah, the problem with the formal agenda is then you got to wait for all the other stuff that you don't have to sit there forever. This Just way, if we do a part of public show. comment, we can get There's it. There's been times where I've had counselors kind of push me ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Well, 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 yep. Pam, the city clerk's been doing just that. Doing more yes. announcements during public comment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then she can yeah. wait and then she got yeah. it. Then she gets to leave. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I like that idea because I. Yeah. Well, well we get together. I mean, the yeah. three of us we can have we can chew up nine right. minutes. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> we can do it. The way you could do it. All right, we'll see you all over the parade. Thank you. Okay. Rain or shine. Thank Rain or shine, it never and not, never not goes. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. Thank you. Take it easy. Okay, well, back to the agenda. Um, the two people, the two you don't want to know that you can have the the other 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 the reviewed her and spoken with her, but it was just because they had the wrong dates. Mm -hmm. So that one is very simple. And then I think Constable Bidwell you spoke with I spoke to Robert Dion last week. Um, he's a lifelong camp guy. He uh, has been going to the senior center as a customer, uh, as a volunteer for, for years. And he decided he wanted to uh, step up and I think Castle Agent would probably be very helpful to have a perspective of someone who's been a client, a customer, whatever. So um, he's very much looking forward to switching into that, in that role. And uh, would be, uh, I think he's probably going to be quite honored to be with him. He's quite going through it. He wouldn't hold it. So I would um, recommend that we move forward to come to a positive recognition for him. Robert Dion. Moved and seconded to send Robert Dion with a positive recommendation to the full council for appointment to the council on eight. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that is unanimous. And is there also a motion to correct the term for uh, uh, Carmen Gino? We're, we're, oh. oh, I see. So, yes, I'll move that we correct the term. To March 2019 to June 2022. Okay, moved and seconded to send the name for the term of March 2019 to 2022. With a positive recommendation to the full council for appointment to the council on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that one's also unanimous. And um, so we have. You know, the solicitor 22, um, and we can expect that on 16th, I would think we might, I don't know if it's going to be another 22 or another, did you say there's 53? 57 altogether. So, so we can expect that before, in the next two meetings, we'll get the remaining um, 34. We have 22 here, and we'll get the remaining 34 within the next two meetings for a total of 57. I mean, the majority of which, the vast majority, are reappointments. So for those 57, I mean, we could just divvy them up and each take 15. Do you want to do that or do you want to just, my thought was for many of these, we could even go right down the line. I mean, because a lot of these are appointments all that, are, that are very recent, you know, right. that were recently right. appointed and now they're coming like even within Some a year. Very, very recent. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd almost, I'd almost like suggest Rachel we just take care, of those, take care of some of those that we know we just recently spoke with and dealt with. We could even 
just do those today, or we could hold off until the June meeting, and we could today just decide which rounds we might want to do that. You can't make a report today. You can't make a recommendation to seven days. Well, see, if you remember, we had a clarification on that from Bill White at the last meeting. He said we just can't report back. We can we can contact them. We can. That's what he said. He I said you couldn't actually take the vote. That's what I always thought. Me too. I thought that is the making the report. Right. Yeah, but okay, but if, can someone then please explain why Bill Dwight chose the time to correct that misunderstanding? That what he claimed was a misunderstanding clarified by the city clerk right. regarding the seven days. You said you could start doing interviews or contacting the people, doing them up among yourselves, but you just couldn't. That's, he's, that's what, he said is you can, what he said is you can't bring it back to the city council before seven days. But to be safe, let's not vote. Let's not to, vote to, till to be, June. To be safe, because I, yeah. I, I yeah. understood yeah. that this okay. right. Yeah, because I was surprised. Make, it's always been you a You can sign conversations, but you couldn't make the vote. Okay. So yeah. it's likely then that we'll take up all 37 of them at the June, at the, well, at one of the two June meetings, because they go to a to, to term of through June. <coughs> so we have three meetings pretty much to probably take up those 37, I'm sorry, 57, 57 right. appointments. Right. Um, as, as that thought, I mean, we could easily determine with, with your help, which of these have, were appointed within the last six months or mm -hmm. the last year. And some of them probably do go back, I would assume, three years. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. You know, I would think if, it's, if we just reviewed them in the last six months, the last 12 months, it, it could be pretty much an automatic without having to do it. Yeah. If it's longer than that, then which there wouldn't be like too many of them, then maybe in those instances we would go back and have another conversation. Right. Uh, just a, just a I, I, that's a good thought, but then we can't really select those folks today. Would have to wait for Laura to review that process and go. But as an administrative procedure, Laura can tomorrow. review it yeah. and, and email it out to us. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't yeah. require any deliberation on it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, also, uh, the reappointments, I find that, like, Dickens was saying something might be like two or three years old, but really not, because they come back, they apply. Okay, they're notified from the mayor's office. So these are new ones coming in. Well, actually, all the reappointments are not new. So most of them are reappointment. There's only one that's not. Exactly. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. And they apparently reapply. Well, they have to. Yeah, yes. Because, yeah. There. That's the process where when they're before their term ends, and they took the time to resync everybody yeah, so that everybody kind of. Yeah. expires at the same time they thought it would be easier for them to just do it all this you know not necessarily easiest actually you know i mean we may want to consider reserving our next couple of um, so meetings just to taking care of whatever the appointments are i don't know because to me the mayor is the one after they reapply to come back on it right yep. they have to reapply he then sends it to out to city councilors and it comes to our committee. So he's already looked at those and brought them to us so they're real appointments. But just this Yeah. What we what we've all we've done. Even even though it's a reappointment, we we've gone through this process before. So if we were to do on all of them just say because it's a reappointment then we don't have to talk to them. Not that saying be, that. And, that would be very and again very different tough. people who've served on this committee and different yeah. In, in different contexts, I mean, we're this committee now, but in the previous committee that Councilor O'Donnell served on, for mm -hmm. example, I mean, he considered it entirely the prerogative of the Councilor reviewing as to whether to make a phone call or whether to um, um, just rely on their own personal knowledge of this person, mm -hmm. if you remember mm -hmm. in that practice. So I think that that is actually what, so I mean, people could choose to whatever depth they choose yes. to review, whether it's speaking directly on the phone or corresponding by email or just vouching based on personal experience because they're your next door neighbor or something like that. 
privilege of following that the way you're saying that you can see the application. No, what you do, I'm just saying that it's, it's that I think the practice has been established at least in the last, in the last iteration of this committee, mm -hmm. which was city services. And did we draw up that process before or after you? Because you remember I, when Councillor O'Donnell made a point of that. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so we, we, we did kind of formalize that process a little bit. Mm -hmm. Beyond, after that, you're saying? Or, or? No, at that. During that time? During that time. Yes. yes. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So we're comfortable then with waiting for Laura to send us a list of those that we know that were um, appointed in the last year. And then for the however many dozen that remain, um, uh, what should be the process of selecting? I mean, well, well, if you if, want to pick that, that, that's just my suggestion. But if, if we were to do it that way and, yep. set, and say of the 57, there were 40 of them that have been within the last year. Mm -hmm. Probably not 40, I would say maybe 20. 30, whatever, half of them. Yeah, a number. Then, 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 then the remaining 30, uh, we, would, we would divide up the way we have other towns in there, and that's where it would be up to the discretion of whoever takes it on, whether to right. just yeah. vouch for them because you know yeah. them, right. or to right. have a right. routine. Well, that's there. why I'm suggesting, I, I mean, in terms of our email correspondence about who's going to take home, mm -hmm. um, I know it's not, it's something that's kind of related, just agenda related, or is it content related that we can't reply all in that, you know what I mean? I'm not sure if in our, if we can just reply all and say, I'd like to take these 14 names, or I'd like to take these eight names. I would think that would be And then if you both say, and then if you're both say, you know, saying the same names, then. I would like to think that that would be considered an administrative, not a I don't know. Okay, but even right. as an administrative matter and not deliberate, it presents a little bit of a problem when you have four people and all four of them claim the same name. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's where you're paid the big bucks to okay. sign it out. Okay, I'll sign. If that makes it easier, I'll just assign everybody from the remainder. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the remainder of the... Yeah, I'll just go down the list. I'll say you take the... Did it. Because otherwise it's going to be going back and forth and I know where it. But that many people, unless... Unless anyone knows right now who they'd like, and I'll make sure that, you know, they were Yeah, um, unless you know somebody that you really want to talk well, to, and I'll just make sure you're... coming forward, right? Right, but for these, for these 22, if you know somebody you want to talk to, let me know now, and I'll make sure you get them. Oh, I have a look. Okay, take your time. Not hurt. Well, and some of them that I know, I also know are within that last year, so... Well, make a note of that, and we'll, you know, once we get the numbers, I'll cross that one off the list. I think he wants to take Robert De Niro. <laughs> Robert, Robert Dion. But Robert That's, Dion was just that he can't be on this list because we just picked him. Well, but he he is on this is. list. He's I not on 20. this list again, is he? He's I on the twenty. I think he is. Yeah. Because I, I just see him off. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Very Robert Dion, we just appointed as a new appointment through, tonight through twenty twenty one. So. And this would extend it to through 2022. Wait, wait, tell me where he is. Am I looking at the wrong page or just nuts? Oh, I see. Yes, down under Council on Aging. So, uh, hmm. So, I don't know. Oh, her. oh, but I see. I remember doing her. It, now, hold on. What does it say on our today's agenda? Through June 2021. Oh, well, why don't we just take care of him right now? Oh, we can't because we have to um, wait for seven days. we did take care of him. No, we only took care of him through, through the end of June of 2019. Oh. Yeah. So, so you know what? All right, so that's one we know, but it, it, why don't we just, I'm going to put an X on that because we know that. And we know also that Joanne Levin was recently just appointed to the Board of Health. We can just look through this. Yes. And then we'll miss, we'll miss we some. Know. We know Elizabeth Silver. Actually, her appointment was to the Housing I Authority, not the Zoning yeah. Board of Appeal. So do you think she wants a separate call? Um, and I imagine you just want to talk to her again, Dennis. For the zoning board, unless you think you bought enough would, info from her. If that's what we're doing now. Then well, here's my guess. Right. If we just appointed her to the council on aging, do you think it would, she would require a separate conversation with Wire regarding the appointment yeah. to the zoning board of appeals? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Dennis. All right. So I'll call Donna Park. But you. Okay. So she's the, she doesn't fall under a recently she appointed to because it's to a yes. So it's because it's to a new board. She she still needs to have a uh, solid. Right, where are we on this list? Regarding her qualifications to serve on that board. Can you, you As a reappointment. What we're doing right now. Are we I'm just going through the list. And to determine just, what. 
which people we know off the top of our heads are not, we don't need to review, such because as Robert Dion. In the last year. Yes, such as Robert Dion. Such as Brian Adams, didn't we recently do him? Yes. I, I'm, 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 I'm just turning. I'm, I'm not certain. Okay, so, but I'm only on page one, so if we just turn over the page here. The ones that I know that we did recently were um, and Emma, I Megan her. Paik. I think Jim spoke with Megan Paik. Do you remember Jim? Mm. Nana, can you tell me where we are? Turn the page Megan I know you I know you spoke with Megan for the Human oh, Rights okay. Commission. But maybe you don't remember. Um, and and with Karen Balavance Grace. Uh, maybe. I, I really I, I really don't know. Okay, well I mean um, did you do it? Uh, well maybe because I've known her for forty oh, years. No. That, that, I mean some of these people just so it's like so hard to know. Which which is why I would still Call everybody in you know, or email or however no, you choose no, to correspond. No, I, I thought where we were headed yeah. was that we would, we would let Laura tell us by email mm -hmm. who has been appointed within the last year. Yeah. In which case we wouldn't have to do anything at all. Exactly. And okay. those that were beyond that, yes. you yes. would then divvy them up among us. Yes, that's within correct. Last year as opposed to last six months. Well, whatever the whatever. whatever but what we were also doing now, what we're also doing now, so that folks have their usual opportunity to choose the people they'd like to speak with, is I want you to let me know, such as Dennis, you just let me know that you'd like to speak with Elizabeth around the zoning board of appeals. So I'll make sure in the assignment process that you get her is the point. Is okay. Yeah. Okay. So if there's anybody else who knows there's somebody that they would like to speak with, and if not, then I'll just get on the line. I would call Martha Lyon and Terry Cole. Okay, so where are the Martha and Terry? Okay. Martha's in the historical, historical and Terry. And, Terry. and I'll do test both. Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, and fast. No, no, uh, I can get them. Just tell me again who you'd like. Uh, Tess Perone, Jeff? Tess Poe. Tess Poe. And uh, give me uh, Craig Della Pena. Uh, okay. And I will do. Um... Now be prepared to each take a few more, though, too. So when, when I give it, you'll right. probably be about five each. I'm getting, you know, it's starting to come back here. I couldn't remember. No. Emma. Um, You'd like to talk to Emma, Marion? Yes. Emma Cornwell, yeah. isn't she? she one of the reasons I thought? She's new. I, I, I think I remember that her, not familiar. probably. Rachel, her. Hart, Rachel Hart is a recent appointment. She is, she is definitely and recent. And does anybody remember speaking with her? No. I, well, yes, I did. Okay. So okay. She's, so she's yeah. We know we're going to probably not have, not have to deal with her. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jenny Nolan. my agent. I'll do the Donna. Oh, Donna Park. Okay. Donna, Donna, Donna Park. Park. Okay. And she may end up having been in the last year anyway. And Benjamin Capistrant is a recent <coughs> appointment. Does anybody remember? Yes, that? Yes. Oh, yeah. He is. He is recent. Yeah. But um, and, you know, I mean, well, Laura will confirm for all this, and then I'll just find the take what's remaining and right. note the people who people have noted they want to speak with, and then I'll take the rest and take it myself and give them to be up. Is Terry Terry on the planning board? I'm trying to think. There's I mean, only there's I'll one. Krista too, but you know, Krista, we sent her to planning board probably last August. <coughs> Around there, she's she was stolen from the TPC. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how I remember. Okay. So, uh, okay. so uh, I have your initial. That, I mean, if it turns out she's within the last. Yeah, year, sure. I, 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 I always enjoy talking. And does anybody remember? I think. I know, Jim, you spoke with Megan Henry, but that's yeah, probably, that within, again, right. that's, that's within I, the last year, so it's probably not going to see somebody's people, people's faces. And I'm going to talk. Ah, I'll, 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 I'll put my, my, which street? The ball. Where is it? Moral Street? Oh, that's off. That, that oh, that's between, between that's, 66 and Earl Street. It's in Ward 2. Oh, okay, okay, because I was thinking about by Laurel Lane with a park. Right. No, the name no, sounds Laurel, so, not Laurel Park. Yeah, okay, I know. The name sounds so familiar. And Sarah North. Oh, no, okay. I'll talk to her too. Okay, so that seems like a plan, right? Mm -hmm. And what about presentations? Do you folks want to see what happens at the next meeting in terms of whether we get those next 
34 appointments or? So what if, because um, we've done this before, if we get a bunch of appointments like that, we just kind of gather afterwards and we can do a quick divvy it up? Well, again, when we get the remaining 34, they probably won't come up, but it'll probably be, you know, 16 and 18 or whatever right. over the next two meetings. But <clears throat> the problem with just gathering and divvying them up then is we don't then take the process that we're hoping to do, which is identify the people that we've already talked to in the last year. And then, you know, but it wouldn't hurt for people to just note the people that they would like to speak with, because then right. I can, you know. Yeah, we'll be able to manage it. Maybe one have two meetings in one month and get it over with. We may have, I, you know, I may sure. be having to be out a little bit myself because um, I'm on a medical leave right now or some things. But if that's the case, I'm sure that I can take care of anything that's missing from me by a, a report or recommended motion. And okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. All right, and then um, does that take you? Was that the last agenda item? I think we talked about it being discussion of the reappointment process, so that's good. Okay. All right, is there a final? Uh, I to move that we adjourn. Second. Move and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.